Welcome to our WUMATS Masterclass with our WUMATS Ambassador, Saga Becker. Um, WUMATS is a pan-European project um, with 12 different European countries that celebrates and highlights women's equal share presence in the arts and creative industries. And uh, what we do, we host a lot of masterclasses in different countries in Europe. Uh, and this time we are here in Tampere. We're very pleased to be at Tampere Film Festival hosting this masterclass with Saga. I'm personally very, very excited to have her here. I'm so happy that she could come. Uh, and uh, the masterclass will be moderated by Tuli Kampila, who is the vice chair of the Feminist Party in Finland. And what they're going to do, they're going to have a very pleasant discussion about Saka's career, about Saka's um, projects, everything. And we would like you guys also to participate, but wait until the very end so that if you have a question, just write it down and then we can have an audience discussion. And because of our live link, anyone online can also ask questions. But please wait until we bring you the microphone so that people can hear the question before Saga replies. Okay? But without further ado, I would like to welcome Saga on stage. Thank you. Yay. And also, also Tuli, please. Everyone, glad you could make it here. I'm Tuli, and I'm going to be moderating the discussion with Saga. Uh, Saga is known for the film Nothing Must Go Sender, Something Must Break. A little bit conference style. <laughs> for the movie, Saga received several awards, including for the best female actor in Sweden, Guldbacke, in 2015. Saga is, aside being an actor, she is also a writer, producer, a trans activist and feminist. Saga says that I've been dream a dreamer for as long as I can remember. A dreamer who, through thoughts, created my own worlds, stories and reality. Saga. Hi. <laughs> What is the goal of your work? Oh my god, <laughs> it's <laughs> such a big question. Uh, I don't know yet. I'm still trying to figure it out, I guess. Um, for me, it's, it's, it's such an impo important um, part of the creative process to develop and searching for answers and um, I uh, yeah I don't know it's like develop me as a person or uh, maybe change change other people's opinions uh, show that uh, show on diversity in the film industry and in the world. Um, yeah, it's, I'm still figuring it out, I guess. <laughs> uh, you, you mentioned a lot about talking about the community, the trans community, the queer community. Is there, some, is there something you want to do for this community in particular in your work? Yes, absolutely. I think it's uh, it's a big part of of my own story and my own life. A uh, question that is about identity and sexuality and the two combines and how the world sees me and how... Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's such a big part of my life and my story and my identity, so I think that is uh, one of the most important things for me to to work with. Uh, and I also know how much it means to people to actually see recognizable things <laughs> on the screen and in culture and in um, 
it saves lives and, and it's such it's so important for me to feel like I'm a part of something bigger something to be a part of society and I think it's so important for me to actually create that platform and create that opportunity to other people to actually just feel themselves in culture to be visible yeah to be visible and to be a part of something bigger yeah humanity yeah <laughs> which is uh, harder than you think i guess um because <laughs> i don't know um me growing up without having any role models without having any culture to feel like representing me or people like me or um, I don't know it's hard to to feel to feel something if you do not exist you know <laughs> yeah um, it's not that inspiring <laughs> no uh, if it's not spoken about it doesn't exist yeah it's true how did you start on this path and this career? Like, what brought you to it? And we're talking about like acting in general, but you're also doing writing and producing. Like, uh, how did you get started? And uh, then we have to talk about something must break, uh, which is like my my first role ever. Uh, I don't have an actor like. Um, career before or uh, I'm not a schooled actor I uh, something must break is based on a book uh, by Elie Levin which is uh, I think the English title is uh, you are the roots that sleeps beneath my feet and holds the earth on place um, it's a very long title <laughs> a beautiful title um, so the movie is based on that book uh, and I read the book and something something happened to me when I read it. It was like for the first time I I felt that a book or a culture was speaking to me and directly and I had so much in common with the main character from from my own story uh, and I felt that I need to do this and it's um, it's not that very common that they have an open casting uh, in the film industry because they, it's very closed uh, and they were uh, they were searching for people who were going to play Sebastian and Ellie for the for the movie and they had so many meetings with casting with different kinds of casting people. Uh, and they were always giving this, the same person um, were coming at the, um, the casting. So they, ha they rethinked and they had an open casting, which is very, uh, not that common. So I was thinking, what the hell? <laughs> I'm just gonna do this. Uh, because it felt so <laughs> important for me personally um, because I just came out as transgender one year before uh, so I don't know it was so important for me because I was so angry I had so much frustration inside of me and I was so angry on a society that I, w I was not a part of it so I felt that I needed to do this for myself and for for people like me who doesn't have the strength to do it or are brave enough to actually just do it. And so it was very personal for me to to go to Stockholm and went to casting and I got the part and. and the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of like sums up also the goal of your work is to be visible. Yeah. Bringing visible. 
yeah. And then uh, I was, I don't know, a part of a new community or like a film industry, which uh, was crazy. <laughs> and I don't know, I... What was crazy about it? I don't know, from, from not being a part of something to actually just be a part and that people are interested in me as a person and what I have to say and um, it opened a lot of n new doors for me uh, as a person to and when I win won the Gullbagge award uh, which is like the Swedish Oscar and I was the first transgender person now to ever be nominated and win uh, so it was a big thing not only for me and for the film industry it was for a whole trans community and a queer community uh, and not <coughs> and not only in Sweden it was like I remember because I was traveling a year before uh, with a movie on film festivals all over the world so I remember people from the whole world were streaming Gullbagge award <laughs> ceremony just to see if I win so it was a big thing for a lot of queer communities around Europe and they were like streaming it <laughs> at their homes and like having parties and stuff like that to mm. celebrate so it's, it's a big thing it's probably a big thing for everybody in Europe and all over the world because it's not very, it's not very usual to yeah. have transgender people in movies yeah. overall yeah totally So you have your own way of doing your work. How do you do it in practice? <coughs> How do you accomplish it? Um, I like to explore while we are doing things. Uh, I don't like to have, I don't have like a, a finished idea or a script when I do things and we didn't do something was breaking that way we were improvising so much uh, and me as an artist or me as an actress are allowed to just be creative in the moment and I think that is such an interesting way of working and it can turn out in so many different ways and I love working with with the moment and with uh, the things that are right now. Uh, so I guess that is one of the most important thing in my work when I do movies or when I do things to actually just let improvisation be a big part of, of the process and in the creative parts. And making in filmmaking and um, so I like to to work with people I think is interesting and have their own stories and their own agenda I'm being in a project because I want to bring the best of them and let them shine and let them be a part of of the creative process um, yeah yeah, I think that is uh, a very important thing for me as in my filmmaking. Yeah, um, being in the moment and kind of mixing things up. Yeah. Know, about how do you go in practice? Like you, you have this rules for filmmaking in a way, and kind of like storylines that people recognize. How do you go and mix things up and make a movie queer, so to say? I think it is uh, that I want to tell stories in new ways, I guess, uh, and and how I choose the people to be behind the cameras. It was very important for me to have a lot of transgender people behind the cameras as runners and uh, 
dressing people and um, a lot of like a good representation behind the cameras is as much as important for me as it is in in everything in my life it's um, it's all about presentation representation yeah bringing people in with different backgrounds so that they can actually yeah. see themselves yeah. a little bit I think that the that is how I get like intersectional perspective in my way of working and in my way of seeing things. Yeah. Because I I know that I don't have every <laughs> perspective, <laughs> and, uh, but I, as a queer creator or a queer filmmaker, can bring that to uh, a set and. Uh, be intersectional when we are creating things together mm -hmm. uh, and I think also that the discussion we have around the movie and on set is as important as the final product uh, so we all are growing as people while we are working together and that is queer filmmaking for me <laughs> because uh, we are learning from each other and that is more important than the film, <laughs> I, have, I think. Yeah, working together. Yeah, people from different backgrounds. Yeah, different perspectives. Yeah. Do you have any favorite films, and what is the thing that makes them your favorites? <coughs> oh my God, it's so hard. Um, but I have like. I like films that challenge me in my way of thinking or my way of seeing the world. So my favorite directors are like Lars von Trier, um, Larry Clark, um, Gaspar Noé, um, a lot of male <laughs> directors I, <laughs> I hear. Um, the majority of them are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but I, I like movies that challenge me and that makes me feel. Uh, I think that a good movie for me should make me uh, scared, happy, sad. And I want everything when I see a movie. Uh, you have kind of like a filmmakers that you look up to in the way is this. What are the things that you look up to them in? Like you mentioned a few names, but... I don't know. It's like uh, the whole product, I guess, or the visions or the visuality and when you're mixing up things it's like when you do hybrids when you mix genres and uh, yeah when you do things that are challenging in a in a world that is so normative i guess uh, so i like movies that challenge that and kind of like in the moment as you said before yeah. that you enjoy your own films yeah you can see the creation do you have any examples of it in mind, like any films that scenes that you kind of like can describe? I think that Melancholia is one of my favorite movies uh, of Lars von Trier. It's like it's so some of the images are just like I don't know. I will never get rid of them, <laughs> and it's they have stayed in my mind and. I guess that picture when uh, uh, I don't remember her name. Who was in Melancholia? Melancholia. Uh, Kirsten Dunst. Yeah, when she is like running through the water in her wedding dress. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's such a beautiful image. Uh, and it, yeah. So everything is kind of like. You enjoy powerful and also 
strong and also heavy images that films can show. Yeah. And it doesn't really have to follow the kind of like the arc of the drama. No. But it can break it. Yeah. Is there something, some ways to kind of like, <coughs> something that you need to kind of remember what you need to do when you're breaking the arc? Or some, some things that work? Hmm. I don't know. Just the kind of like the in the mo being in the moment. I'm thinking. Yeah, being in the moment. I think it's it's, uh, but also like create safe spaces for everyone who is on set. It's yeah. very important for me, um, um, to actually make everyone feel feel safe in that room we are creating, and if we. If we're gonna do like heavy scenes, like we talk about it and analyze it, and yeah, just not create things that we are talking about and then analyze things and talking about things when some time has passed and yeah, and go back to the yeah and yeah talk about things. I think that. Um that is so important to have communication when you are on set and yeah. after and before and and talking about bound boundaries and um yeah, talking about what other people might think about the movie when we are releasing it and um talking about risks and Talking about everything that might happen. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me a bit about bit, about, bit about your writing process. Like how do you do it in practice? Do you follow some rules, or just do it like thumbs up? I think then my writing processes are so different from time to time, I think. Now Fuck Girls is uh, my first and only movie that I directed and written. Uh, I have, I'm working on <laughs> other <laughs> films uh, mm -hmm. too, and I'm also working on my first novel, uh, which is coming out in Sweden in August. Uh -huh. I just like to listen to music, I guess. Uh, to just disappear in like different sounds, landscapes, and just be in a moment, and and then just I I leave the text, and then I take I go back to the text, and then I am rethinking everything like norm creative <laughs> uh, and I try to twist things up uh, I guess for me uh, as a queer artist or a queer creator I think that is important to actually just twist things up and um, and telling new stories and old stories in new ways I guess do you have a place where you go to, like physically, on your, or in your mind when you do this, you go into the process so far? No, I like to write in bed. Um, yeah, if I, at home, I think. Uh, where I. Places where I feel safe. Uh, that can also that can make my writing or my creative processes more more bold and more true or more vulnerable because I feel safe so I can give more of myself because I feel safe mm. and so that is important that I feel safe when I do creative things do you get this fear of that what am I writing you know I'm delving into this, into my own 
in my own safe space where I feel I'm safe, but you get this fear that elsewhere with this stuff I will not be safe. Of course I do, I think <laughs> that everyone who is writing <laughs> should do that, but I don't know, I think that, of course I am afraid what people will think, because me as, I don't get that many chances, um, we all know that men in this industry can Failure have failed a hundred times. Uh, female uh, female creators cannot fail, uh, and and queer people and trans people, we should just be happy if we ever get a chance at all. Uh, so of course, I'm afraid that what I do is being more criticized than other people's work. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I feel that I need to prove myself 10 times better than uh, other people uh, all the time. Uh, because you're that, that trans artist. Yeah, I'm that person. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know, I get compared with it's like hard being transgender in this uh, in this industry and in this society because I always be compared to cisgendered people and I don't want to be a cisgender person and I don't want to be <laughs> compared with them because I am <laughs> I'm gonna be me and um, so I feel that I need to be better more beautiful more uh, empowering more 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 uh, all the time um, and that is exhausting <laughs> sometimes. Uh. Next, we're gonna go back and go and show your movie, yeah. Fuck Girls. I think we're going to the stage a bit. Yes. So we're gonna come back. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Saga. Thank you. What do you want to say with the movie, Fuck Girls? Um, a lot of things, I think. Uh, I, uh, I don't know, I was like creating this movie with, I don't know, anger. Uh, Anger is like the lead word, I think. And we were talking about so much during the movie and uh, just about anger and like siblinghood and uh, being strong in being strong together and feel the strengthness from each other. And I wanted to do something something about not being reasonable, that it's okay for, <laughs> for transgender people to actually be mad and act <laughs> out of uh, that feeling, because it's, because it's not easy being trans uh, and being a queer pe person, uh, and it's hard to not be angry on a society that pushes pushes you away all the time and I wanted to do a, a movie about that about this anger and frustration and um, but also the power in a community and having siblings that will catch you if you fall and then we are strong together uh, because lonely is not strong and I wanted to do something about that uh, about this 
siblinghood between these three uh, girls and it's a hybrid between documentary and music video thing I don't know what it is <laughs> queer film yeah queer film <laughs> Um, so I wanted to do something together with uh, Ivy and Heidi, who are also uh, the other girls in the movie. And we were uh, in the same documentary series on SVT, uh, Swedish television, uh, which was a documentary series about being a trans uh, trans girl in Sweden or a trans woman in Sweden and so I met them there and I wanted to do something something creative uh, with them um, because they have such an they are so interesting people and so strong people and they have their own stories and I wanted to create something together with them because they mean so much to me and they become friends forever and like in my heart and it's yeah so I wanted the first half is like documentary we were talking about experience of being human <laughs> and uh, talking about the oppression of being a, hu a trans person in this society and and then we were like improvising and la talking off camera, on camera, and, and then we also like created this, we were creating so much <laughs> in the moment in this whole movie. We had like a, a script or original idea, but we were just using the idea to create what we what we made together. So, and uh, Christopher, who is uh, the photographer and the co director of this, is we had so many discussions, and he somehow, like, he's, he understands my crazy brain <laughs> when I <laughs> did the script. I was like, uh, oh my god, they're gonna uh, lie in the woods and it's gonna be come up hands uh, and he was like creating it together with me so we built up a forest in a studio and uh, we had like holes in the tables and <laughs> like 20 people under <laughs> and um, yeah, we were creative together and created this um, this beautiful little art together uh, yeah together with the people who kind of felt right and you can like that with yeah the recurring theme <laughs> yes <laughs> The Crying Game was a movie that came out in 1992 and this was a movie about it involved a transgender woman who in the film a man falls in love with, finds out that the woman is transgender and therefore is repulsed by her. How much has changed since then in the filmmaking industry since 1992, 27 years? I think a lot of things are happening. Uh, mm, at least in the US, I guess that the film industry actually has an <laughs> ongoing like, discussion about it. Uh, we have like trans activists like um, Laverne Cox, who was in uh, Orange is the New Black. We have the FX TV series Pose, which has like the biggest uh, cast of transgender people ever in history, <laughs> which is like um, and we have uh, the YouTube series Her, which also includes two transgender women in their dating lives. Uh, so that 
it is happening things there, but I don't know, uh, here, I don't know, <laughs> I'm still fighting, but we aren't that much, we aren't that many um, transgender actress or p people in Sweden, we are like, I think we are five in Sweden who is uh, doing acting. <laughs> Um, and that is not, it's hard to, I don't know, it's, it is a part, it's, it's a discussion, but not, I don't know, it's not <laughs> that, that big discussion, I think, yeah. uh, not as well, much as I wanted it to be, uh, because now Sweden has one transgender movie, which is something must break. Um, so I don't, I don't know. That's it. We That's don't need it. anymore. Yes. Sweden also has two lesbian films. Uh, <laughs> 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 fucking Ormol and <laughs> Kiss Me. <laughs> and it was like 10 years between them. So I guess like it's going to take 20 years <laughs> in... Um, yeah, <laughs> so I don't know, it's, um, and I think that s Swedish film, Swedish film industry are seeing itself as being like, so progress, uh, and so, uh, I don't know, bald, and, uh, but I don't, I don't see it for me as a queer person because I only been to like three castings since I won the Gullberg Award, which tells a lot about the industry, that people don't know where to put me. And, uh, and uh, I don't know, it doesn't, yeah. I mean, there are like <laughs> young women older woman yeah. roles, but there is not necessarily a trans woman role for anything. No. And even if it was, like, I mean, why couldn't a trans woman yeah. play any other woman? No, if you look like in history, it's now transgender people are, I'm, I'm like the first person in Swedish uh, film his history that play is a transgender who's play a transgender. It's I'm the only example in Swedish film industry. So it's mm -hmm. um, it says a lot. Um, but I guess it's that things are things are changing. Uh, we hope. Yeah, <laughs> at least I'm trying to make. Uh, I make my own stuff now and I will make things about ident identity and sexuality um, because I think that is one of the most important things in my life and in my creative work uh, so I'm I'm gonna be a part of it um, but uh, uh, yeah. yeah let's move later to the queer sexuality in movies let's talk first about more about a little bit about pres representation in the industry. There is an interesting fact that the amount of LGBT people in TV series in the US was up to 9% from 4.5 only two years ago. Is there any collaboration in the Nordics, for example, that could, you know, enable this in the future or going on like that? I hope that things are gonna change and uh, because I don't think that we have like in Swedish television we don't have a trans character of on any anyone I what I know of uh, so I don't know we have to collo do collaborations uh, I think uh, in the Nordic countries uh, get activists and creative people to work together uh, outside their own countries, I guess. Um, 
Yeah, I'm wondering if it's not only just the film industry thing, but also other sectors, other activists that yeah. can make this happen. If we want to make this happen. Yeah. Mm. But it has to be like people who have the uh, energy and uh, the time to do it. Because it's hard to get finances <laughs> to do anything today. <laughs> um, yeah. How do transgender people do financially in the fine film and creative industry? Do you know more about this? No, I don't have like so many friends that is transgender <laughs> in this industry. <laughs> I feel very lonely. Um, yeah, but it's 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 hard for everyone in this industry and. I don't know, I feel like I, me, as a queer creator, I need to be more creative and more intersectional and be more, uh, be more mm. in every way because that is what people expect from me. I don't think that but male mm. filmmakers have to be as uh, creative and intersectional in their projects uh, as I do. Um, because I see, I see the same movies on and on and on and on in Swedish, uh, yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, I hope to see some diversity, which I absolutely think is happening after Me Too, and especially Tisnad Targeting, uh, which is like the Me Too uh, in film industry in Sweden, which is, uh, things are happening, uh, and but it takes time to to see the result of it because it's a very slow industry. <laughs> it takes four years to make a movie mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and things like that. So we have we have to wait and see what what the, what is going to happen after all of this um, because the discussion is on now. We can actually make things happening. Yeah. Uh, we have covered a lot of your work so far and a little bit about the industry and, and, and transgender positions in the film industry. Let's talk about you as a trans activist. What are the narratives of trans people and what's missing? What's mm. wrong? And what's good? Like transgender is a, and gender diversity is a hot topic right now. People are talking about it. Let's talk about that. Yeah, I guess it's like I was saying that yeah, it's 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 a hot topic and it's also like trendy or how should I put it? It's like <laughs> it's um, yeah. I mean, some people call it like a fashion trend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's like it's the new black. It's like <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's and I use every like. Uh, opportunities to actually do things when it happens uh, and I got every opportunity to actually make my activism a part of my creative processes and um, every time I do an interview I am an activist every time I go out it's it's hard to not be political when your whole existence is politic. Uh, so everything everything you do somehow become politics or activism, even if you don't want it. It's um, I just became that person, even if I didn't want it. Uh, so being political is like for me it's it's part
part of me. It's just the... Even if I just want to create things I want to watch, it becomes political. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah. It's just a part of who I see the world, I guess, and how I create things. Uh, yeah, and how I see everything, I guess. You talk about politics. What does intersectional perspective mean for you? For me, uh, I see it as a responsibility and uh, an opportunity to actually create something and do something that is a unit or a whole unit or because I, me, me as a person doesn't have every perspective, but it's my responsibility as a creative person to try to get as much as I can. If I don't have a perspective, I meet people or take uh, the perspective in from other people. Uh, and I think that is, that is my responsibility as a creative creator or as a filmmaker to And for my community um, to be sectional and uh, to get as much perspective as I can in one piece. Uh, and that you can do it in so many ways. Uh, for me, it is like when we did Fuck Girls, we were. For me, it was like very important who was behind the camera, and bringing people who weren't in the industry, who had hard times in getting into the industry, and to help them in, and and, and to have diversity in people there and talking about things. Uh, yeah. What are the cur current narratives of change? transgender people and like what should be changed and what should be reinforced I think then there are so many so many stories and so many there isn't like one way of being trans it's a thousand different it's like Everything is so personal, and I think the most important thing is to show that it's okay to be you, and for me it is to create like safe spaces and platforms to for people or for my community to be a part of or feel inspired by and be encouraged to create your own things or collaboration and um, so out of authentic experiences yeah and um, without the kind of like image of what it should be yeah um, <coughs> so there are no rights and wrong in being trans and I this is only this is my first short movie. Mm -hmm. I want to do so much more and I want to tell so much more stories and um, so uh, there are a lot of more to come, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk sexuality and gender. I mean, I guess in the audience as well, when you talk about these topics, a lot of people, you have noticed that a lot of people still today cannot comprehend the difference between sexuality and gender. I mean, these are not simple topics no. at all for anybody. Why is it that many people cannot understand gender diversity? And is there something we can do about it? I think that the most important thing is to actually show show diversity on 
in in films and in culture and uh, knowledge is power but you can only know what's out there uh, and or what the things you see because I grew up without any role models or any trans stories or any trans people around me at all I didn't even know that I was trans because I didn't even know the word trans or I didn't know people could think like me and I think that is uh, that is the most important thing to actually show diversity in in the world uh, and then I think the film industry has one of the most powerful way of doing it and a big responsibility of actually showing uh, diversity in in the world and in there's so many opportunities there and I know when I uh, when we showed something must break people have I, I still get emails from people who had the saying that they they came out after they seen the movie they chosen to live instead of committing suicide which is like the best thing that I can have as a, as a person but they for the first time in their life see a person who looks like them who feels like them and that they can see themselves in and I think that is so important to and to show different kind of stories and identities and genders and uh, I don't know people in general are mm, don't think I don't think the people reflect on that they are taking that for granted because they don't have to reflect on their own gender or their own identity um, so most of the people in the world taking it for granted um, I didn't because I was without role models in my whole life and then there's so many opportunities for uh, industry to show diversity and that can save lives and can change the, the whole society's looks on transgender people or queer people or uh, changing structures in the society uh, and I think sometimes the film industry are uh, not doing that they are like instead of not giving uh, I don't know yeah I think it's so I get so personal when it comes to things like this because I know the I know how much it means to people because I've been a person myself who has been without uh, narratives that speaks to me uh, and that almost cost my life um, so I know the important I know how important it is for people to to be a part of something bigger and being a part of uh, I don't know everybody needs heroes mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, yourself or something yeah. about yourself something that they can reflect themselves in or um, yeah how important is it to portray queer sexualities it's very important because I didn't know that I was queer until I <laughs> saw it myself so it's like um, it's the same thing there. You only can choose between the things you know. And if you don't know, how the hell are you gonna know it's the right thing for you? Um, 
and it's about tolerance in the society I guess too because things are changing in in the society when it's more diversity in the TV and uh, the movie industry I guess when uh, a lot of people have heard about scam for example uh, which is uh, a youth TV series uh, from Norway uh, the third season is about uh, a gay couple and I think that is changing things that is actually um, changing things in society uh, and it's like show showing things like they are is so important uh, not only for queer communities it's for everyone to just if people if if society is gonna change it's gonna change and we're gonna show it uh, I'm still waiting for a transgender person to uh, tell me what's ever gonna be tomorrow <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah or reading the news or um, yeah or all that hasn't doesn't need to be for a transgender person yeah for uh, just be You said that every topic here is a part of how I work. It's difficult to lift up a single topic. You mentioned about this is can you open this up a little bit more? Like I think it's like hard to to choose uh, topics that is more important than others because uh, I think that every topic is like part of something bigger. It's like <laughs> about intersectionality again. Um, I think that we need to discuss a lot of different things to make a bigger change, I think. Um, it's hard to to say that one topic is more important than another. I think that it's how you do it and how you talk about it that is, that is uh, the most important thing. More important to talk about how you talk about than what you talk about. It's more important to talk about how you talk about a topic than what the topic is in itself. Well, I guess uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're writing a new book right now. Can yeah. you tell me about it? I have something about it. Uh, I've always been like a writing person. Uh, I've been writing my whole life, so now I am working on my first novel, and so it's gonna come out in August this year, and it's it's like this hybrid thing, <laughs> which I like again. Uh, it's like this. It started as an autobiography, and then I was so tired of myself and my story. So <laughs> I wanted to create something, <laughs> something different. So it's like uh, an out of fiction thing. So I'm I'm using myself and my own experience, but it's it's a fiction novel. So so yeah, I'm using myself to tell a story. Uh, and see how it turns out <laughs> when we'll be expecting it in August. Good. Yes. That's all the questions that I have. Yes. Uh, we'll now turn to the audience. Now we have time, 15 minutes for questions. If anyone has questions, please uh, raise your hand. We have the first question there. So we need to use the microphone for the live stream, so just wait until I bring the microphone to you. Okay, maybe I'll stand up. 
Hi, I'm Oti, and I'm mostly doing freelance work in production, but also dabble in writing and creative things. And first, I would like to thank you for your film. It was very dark and beautiful and empowering. Thank you. Uh, what came to mind was that usually in the pride movement, uh, things that are more positive and lean toward the normative side are emphasized because they are maybe more more sellable or popular like uh, love is love of, of course uh, and maybe the more darker things are pushed aside and um, there's been a lot of talk of like um, pushing aside trans people to to bring bring forward just the I I don't want to say gay agenda but yeah the only the sexuality agenda but um, what I, what I'm thinking is that do you ever feel like you you feel the pressure to conform to this positive narrative rather than showing these darker tones? Um, yes, I, I do think about it a lot of times because it's easier to get money to, to do happy gay stuff. Uh, <laughs> it's the truth. Um, but I'm not that interested in telling that stories because I think that they we have so many stories that is like that um, so uh, no but sometimes I think that I should write a happy script and then get some money and then do <laughs> dark movie and wait <laughs> um, so, I think so it's yeah it's, it's smarter sometimes to do that because uh, I'm working on a new short movie, and I am going to do a cut version to actually search money, uh, and then I should bring some dark stuff <laughs> after I got the money. Um, <laughs> so it, it's it's like it's a way uh, you need to think in that way to. Uh, I don't know. It it takes time to build up um, yeah, I don't know. Um, of course I think of it. Um, but it's it's I think it's sad that I need to think about it uh, instead of just creating my things uh, and or creating my because I want to do things in my universe, which um, I have created my own universe and I will keep on telling things from that universe. Uh, and I don't want to think, if some people don't want to watch, don't watch. Um, yeah. Anyone else? Hands up. I have a question, because yes. uh, I had the pleasure of uh, getting to know you this weekend, which has been fantastic. And I know that we, we have this ongoing discussion of whose voice is the right voice to use to tell the stories. But we had an inter interesting discussion about humanity. So in terms of what you can bring to the table, your universe, um, what do you think that we, we, we really need that in terms of expanding the humanity, right? Do you have, what can you say to kind of explain that to someone who is not necessarily in the know, like <coughs> us filmmakers, we know that it's so hard sometimes to get the money, you know? But can you use this argument when you try to go and get funding for the darker stuff or for your universe stuff? I think that it's so important for me as a creative 
person to show the reality I live in. Uh, and even if people thinks, uh, think it's too dark, it's still people's reality. Uh, and it's, we cannot be, I'm not afraid of telling different kinds of story and, or dark stories because I live with it and I see it every day in my uh, in my friends' lives and uh, I think it's so important to show different kinds of stories and I am more into telling the dark stories than I am to telling the uh, happy stories um, because <laughs> that's the way I lived and um, so I am not afraid to discuss it with the people <laughs> who have the money um, and we did we get some money to do fuck girls but we didn't get as much as we wanted but we made it anyway and we we weren't afraid to to show some dark things uh, <laughs> Any happy questions? <laughs> <laughs> you can also ask in Finnish, so we can translate, or Swedish, but it's only English because of our international audience. Hello. Hello. Thanks a lot. Very good to have you here and it's been interesting. Um, I don't really, I didn't form my question very <laughs> well in my head but I still would like to know about, uh, you, you, were say, you were saying that it's not so easy to get roles in the film industry. So have you personally been uh, trying to get, for example, just normal women actress roles? Is it possible, and do you, do you think that uh, if trans people would get more like that kind of roles would uh, make it more normal and help uh, the trans community to be more normalized? Or is it r more important to be uh, seen as a transgender person? I think it's both. Uh, it's in both are important. Uh, I don't know, I have like casting directors who are asking me if i done surgeries and stuff. Um, because if I had, I could be anything and stuff like that. And I don't want to be a part of a film industry that is treating me like that. Uh, so, but it's hard. It, it really brings you down to, to be in this to be in a, in a binary in a binary world when you don't see the world like that yourself. Um, so it's it's hard to live in an unqueer world when you are queer. Um, So I don't know. It's it's hard. I think that Swedish film industry are missing an opportunity to even work with me, and I don't have opportunities to show what I can more do more. Uh, so I think it's it's sad, but um, but I also I, I do my own stuff my way of uh, living, I guess, <laughs> because uh, if things aren't happening fast enough, I have to do it myself, I think. And I am going to be a person that gives trans people roles in my <laughs> productions, <laughs> so yeah, I do, <laughs> yeah. Maybe one last question before we finish, wrap up. Anyone? Yeah?
Um, my uh, question about um, your art and your films, uh, have you ever thought to uh, leave Sweden and, uh, um, and uh, shooting maybe in USA or other country? Uh, yeah, I have been thinking of doing like collaboration and stuff with uh, other people and I have done some things in uh, Berlin for example, uh, mostly like music video things and stuff like that. So I am thinking of doing things uh, outside Sweden. Uh, I want to do something in Scandinavia. I want to like start something or like a documentary series or uh, something that brings queer people in Scandinavia together um, and yeah, create like opportunities for us to work and to meet together because we have, I know we have the same issues in, in the countries. So we should uh, do collaborations together because uh, queer filmmaking is important, I think. Uh, and I think that we are struggling all over the world. So why not struggle together, I think. <laughs> well, that's a nice way to end it. <laughs> Yes. Let's all struggle together <laughs> <laughs> and form a community. Um, I want to thank you, everyone uh, here and also online, uh, for joining us for this masterclass. I really want to thank Saga for being here and for being open yes. and lovely. And I want to thank Tuli for moderating. And I wish you guys at the Feminist Party all the best now that our government crashed. <laughs> <laughs> Let's create the new universe. Um, I want to remind you guys that at 8 tonight there's going to be a screening of Nonting Mostoko Sender, uh, Something Must Break, at Levna number 4. <laughs> Sorry if I make a mistake, but please do join us for the screening because after the movie we will have a Q&A with Saga. So you can ask her more questions. Yeah? Thank you so much. <laughs>